Welcome back to our discussion of the accounting process. Let's look at transaction number 10. Several customers make deposits for 10 widgets that BM will deliver in several months. This is $3,500 in cash. How do we account for this transaction? Customers deposited $3,500 for widgets we will deliver at a later time. Well, let's start with the easy part of accounting for this transaction. Customers paid us in cash. Naturally, we're going to adjust the cash T account. Cash came in, so we're going to increase the cash T account, which means we're going to make a left side entry. $3,500 coming in, is this operating activities, financing activities, or investing activities? Now, by process of elimination, you should figure out that it is operating activities, but you should understand why. It is an operating activity because we sell widgets and the deposits are for widgets. So, I'm going to increase our cash count by $3,500. Now, the question is, what is our right side entry? You might say, ooh, it's for widgets, so it must be a sale. Wait a minute before you do anything. So you might say, you know what, it's a sale, I'm gonna put $3,500 here. But we do not account for a sale until we have actually delivered the widgets to our customers. Our customers have paid for them, but we have not delivered them. So it is not a sale yet question is, what is it? $3,500? Well, think about it. We've received $3,500, and now we have an obligation to deliver widgets sometimes in, sometime in the future. This obligation is a liability. So let's go to the liabilities T accounts. What kind of liability is it? Is it account payable? Well, it's not money we owe to our suppliers. Is it long-term debt like the bank loan? No, this is more short term. We're going we're gonna to do this within the next mm, 60 days, 90 days, something like that. Uh, is it accrued rent? Well, no, it's not rent. This is what we call deferred revenue. Think about it. This is going to be revenue. It's going to be a sale once we deliver it, but it is not revenue yet. So this is what we call deferred revenue. We're going to put the $3,500 here to represent the liability we have to deliver the widgets, the widgets for which we have already received payment. This is how we account for this transaction. Let's move on to the next transaction. Transaction number 11. BM pays suppliers $30,000 for widgets BM purchased on credit. See number six above. So just to refresh our memories, uh, in transaction number six, BM purchased some widgets on 60 days credit from various suppliers. Now, during the year, BM has paid uh, $30,000 of this $40,000. Let's see how we account for that. So we're paying $30,000 to suppliers for inventory, for widgets we bought on credit. So let's do the easy part of the transaction first. We are paying now $30,000 in cash. So that means we are adjusting our cash account. Uh, we are decreasing our cash account because cash is going out. When we decrease our cash account, we uh, make a right side entry. So we're gonna make a $30,000 entry on the right side. Here, the question is, is it an operating cash flow or is it investing cash flow or is it financing cash flow? And remember what it is, it's about the sale of widgets. That is our business. So it is operating cash flow, cash flow out. So that's $30,000 cash flow going out. Now, where would the left side entry be? Think about what this would change. Well, originally, we bought $40,000 worth of widgets on credit. 
we made an entry when we booked that transaction, our credit purchase. We go, to account, we go to liabilities and we see we have that accounts payable for $40,000. Now, we're paying that off, not all of it, but we're paying some of it off. So we are reducing that obligation. We are reducing that liability. You see, in the liabilities accounts, the liabilities T accounts, a left side entry is where we decrease, where we reduce our liability. So we will now reduce that liability for $30,000. And we are done accounting for this transaction. In our next transaction, BM receives payment from some customers who had purchased from BM on credit. And we're receiving $21,000 from various customers. If we look at nine, this is where we sold to customers on credit, on 90 days credit. At that time, we booked that as a sale, $42,000 as a sale. And we also booked $42,000 as, do you remember? An account receivable. Let's go account for transaction number 12. So customers are paying us $21,000 in cash for items they bought on account, for items they bought on credit earlier in the year. So first, the easy part of the transaction, we're receiving cash. So we're going to increase our cash account by making a left side entry. Once again, you can probably guess what this is from process of elimination, but normally you wouldn't have these already prepared for you. But yes, this is an operating cash flow. It's with respect to the sale of widgets we made earlier in the year on credit, and now we're receiving cash for it, $21,000. That is part of our operations. All right, so we've made the left side entry. Where's the right side entry? Well, remember when we first made this credit sale, we booked it as an account receivable. We're now being paid back some of that. And so we no longer have that as an account receivable. So we go to our accounts receivable. Originally, we had $42,000 that was owed to us from our customers. Some of our customers have paid us back. And so we reduce the accounts receivable account by making a right side entry of $21,000. And we are done accounting for that transaction. In transaction 13, BM delivers six widgets to customers who had placed deposits on those widgets. Uh, if you remember from transaction 10, several customers made deposits for 10 widgets that BM promised to deliver in several months uh, at $350 per widget. So now BM delivers six widgets um, and the Customers had paid $350 for each of those widgets, which is $2,100 for six widgets. Let's go account for this $2,100 transaction. So BM delivers six widgets. The purchase price for those widgets were $350 each. Six times 350 is $2,100. How do we book that $2,100? Well, remember that when you deliver what you promised to deliver, it is a sale. And we account for sales in our owner's equity T accounts, specifically in the P&L T account. Remember, Sales minus expenses equals profit, and the profit belongs to the owners, so this is an owner's equity uh, account. We book all sales in owner's equity. The sale is for $2,100. All right, so that is our right side entry. What is our left side entry? Well, you remember when we had a cash sale, 
We'd make a right side entry in sales in the PLT account to record the sale. And then we'd make a left side entry in cash to record the cash that we received. But we didn't receive cash this time. We already received this cash at that time. Right? So we received the cash when the customers made the deposit, so we're not receiving cash now in this transaction. When we had uh, a sale on credit, we'd make a right-side entry in the P&L account, which we did, just did for $2,100, and then a left-side entry would go here. But we're not selling on credit here. So the question is, how do we book this $2,100? Where do we make the left-side entry? Let's look at this account, our liabilities account, a deferred revenue T account. When we originally accepted the deposit, we increased our cash T account. We also increased our deferred revenue account. Why? Because we have received what we are due under our contract, and therefore we now have a, an accounting liability. And we booked it as a liability. It's not revenue yet. At that time, when we receive the deposit, it's not revenue yet, but in the future, it will become revenue. And it just became revenue. We just booked at least part of this, $2,100 of this, as a sale. So we are actually reducing our obligation. We have delivered six of the 10 widgets. We're reducing our obligation by $2,100. Now, remember, anytime we had a sale, we had to make two sets of entries. The first was recording the sale. The second entry is to record the inventory that goes out. So we just delivered six widgets, which means six widgets went out of our inventory account. So we have to account for that. Now, we're going to decrease our inventory account, so we're going to make a right side entry. The question is, for how much? If you're saying $2,100, you're wrong because that was the purchase price. Our inventory is recorded based on our cost of acquisition. How much did it cost for us to buy the inventory? If you remember, it cost us $200 per widget when we bought our inventory here and here. We bought it for $200 per widget. So when inventory goes out, we also have to record it at $200 per widget. We had six widgets, which means $1,200 is going out. All right, so we reduced our inventory account by $1,200. Don't forget that we have to find a T account to make a left side entry of $1,200. When inventory goes out, how do we book it last time we made a sale? It's now an expense. This is a cost of goods sold expense. This is a $1,200 expense here. Remember, when we bought the inventory, we did not expense it. Now that it's going out, we expense it. And it's part of our P&L account of our sales minus expenses. And that is cost of goods sold. And that is how we account for this transaction. Our next transaction. During the year, BM paid $2,000 cash in utilities. Let's account for this transaction in our T accounts. BM paid $2,000 during the year for utilities. How would we account for that? Well, it was $2,000 cash. So we need to reduce our cash T account. The question is, is this operating cash flow? Is it investing cash flow or is it financing cash flow? Well, it's not financing cash flow. We're not raising any money. It's not investing cash flow. We're not buying any type of capital asset like a building or a truck or computers. We're uh, buying a service, utilities, and we are using that up during the year. So to make our widgets or to sell our widgets. So this is part of our operations. So this is going to be an operating expense, excuse me, an operating cash flow of $2,000. Now the question is, now that we have this right side entry, where will the left side entry be? Well, I kind of gave it away by saying this is an operating expense. This is operating cash flow 
question is, where would we uh, uh, book the left side? And because I said it's an expense, you can probably guess that we're going to book it as an expense in our P&L account, where we book our sales, our revenue, and where we book our expenses. So here, we're going to have a $2,000 expense. Not a very hard transaction to account for. That's how you account for it. Transaction 15. During the year, BM paid $8,000 cash in wages to its employees. Let's go to the T accounts. $8,000 in wages to employees. Now, if in your head you said, wait, this looks exactly like the utilities, $2,000 in utilities that BM paid in cash, it is the same. You would account for it the same way. So there's the utilities. Wages are also an operating cash flow, right? We're, we're paying our employees as part of our operations to sell widgets. So we reduce our cash account by $8,000. And just like we did for the uh, utilities, we book it as an expense. And you can see I've already conveniently labeled these things. So it's easier to do, but this would be an operating expense. This would be an expense. And so we expense it. Remember, we book our revenue and expenses in our P&L account. And that's how we account for that transaction. In transaction 16, we are accounting for BM's rent for the year. So during the year, BM paid $9,000 cash for rent through November but still owes $1,000 in rent for December. So this is on December 31st. Apparently we're paying uh, rent uh, a few days after uh, the end of the month. If you remember in transaction four, BM entered into a five-year lease for $1,000 a rent per month. And you're looking, you see 9,000 and 1,000 equals 10,000, but it was $1,000 per month and there's 12 months in a year. Well, the idea is that uh, BM entered into this lease sometime during the year, entered into it in March, and therefore from March to November, it paid $9,000 cash in rent. And then at the end of the year on December 31st, it still hasn't paid the $1,000 that it owes for December. Let's account for this transaction. All right, by the end of the year, B&M has paid $9,000 in rent and still owes $1,000 for December rent. I'm going to account for this a little bit backwards. First, we're going to go to the owner's equity T account. Rent is an expense. So we have paid $9,000 in cash and we still owe $1,000 for December. Now, clearly, $9,000 would be a rent expense. The question is, is $1,000 a rent expense? Are we going to book an entire $10,000 as rent expense here? And the answer is yes. The $9,000 we have already paid for rent this year, plus the $1,000 we owe for December. Why is the $1,000 we owe for December included as an expense. Well, remember, we expense something not because we've paid for it in cash or not. That's not the test for whether something is an expense. Something is an expense if we have received what we have been promised. So we have received occupancy of the space for the month of December. And because we've received it, we now book it as an expense. We owe that money. All right, so the entire $10,000 in rent, $9,000 we've paid in cash and $1,000 we still owe, that is an expense. How do we account for the $9,000 and the $1,000 on the, the right side of the T accounts? Well, the $9,000 is pretty easy, right? It was $9,000 we paid in cash, so we will reduce our t cash T account by $9,000. Rent is an operating cash flow. Now the $1,000. Well, 
we owe one thousand dollars in rent for december hopefully the word o gives it away as a that's right a liability and it is rent so we're going to create or, or we've already created it we're going to use a new t account called accrued rent you might see this as accrued rent or rent payable uh, it's the same idea we now owe one thousand dollars in rent so let's review what we've done nine thousand dollars in cash for rent we've already paid during the year that's a right side entry so we have a nine thousand dollar right side entry we have a one thousand dollar right side entry for rent that we owe so together the nine thousand dollars plus the one thousand dollars is a ten thousand dollar is as an entry of ten thousand dollars on the right side we have to make an equal amount entry on the left side and that is the entry we made here in the PL account for ten thousand dollars as an expense transaction number 17 during the year bm paid twelve hundred dollars to the bank and that twelve hundred dollars is divided into one thousand dollars in principal and two hundred dollars in interest if you remember in transaction number three bm borrowed ten thousand dollars from the bank let's see how we account for this transaction bm is paying back its loan to the bank it is paying back in cash so we're going to have to reduce the cash t account the payment was $1,200. Now the question is, we know this is gonna be a right side entry because we're reducing our cash by $1,200. The question is, is this operations or is it financing? It's both. Part of it is operations and part of it is financing. Think about it. When we borrowed the money, what was that? Do you see it here? Do you see it here? It's somewhere here, there it is this is where we borrowed the money so it's financing so paying back that money is also going to be financing cash flow the money coming in was financing cash flow when we're paying it back it is also financing cash flow so some of it's going to be financing remember the fact pattern said that one thousand dollars was to pay back the principal and two hundred dollars was to pay the interest on the loan so the $1,000 in principal that we're paying back is financing cash flow, cash out. The $200, we're going to book that as operations cash flow. All right, so we have $1,000 and $200. We have a right side entry of $200 that we have to make a left side entry for somewhere. And we have $1,000 entry here out and we have to find the appropriate left side entry to make let's do this one the one thousand dollars well we're paying down on the loan where did we book the loan originally we booked the loan originally here as long-term debt we've made a payment so originally we owed ten thousand dollars we borrowed ten thousand dollars and that means we owed ten thousand dollars we have paid back one thousand dollars so we no longer owe ten thousand dollars we owe nine thousand dollars so we simply reduce uh, our long-term debt t account by making a left side entry let's go back to our original entry so we've taken care of this let's take care of the two hundred dollar cash out so we uh, paid two hundred dollars on interest where would you account for that well this interest is considered an expense so we will book it as an expense Remember, expenses are booked in our P&L account, and uh, it is the left side of our P&L account. All right, in this transaction, we introduced the concept of depreciation. The delivery truck depreciated $4,000 during the year. 
Remember, in transaction two, we bought the delivery truck for $25,000 cash. Now, you might be asking yourself, what is depreciation? Why am I accounting for this? Well, remember when we bought the truck, we spent $25,000, but we did not account for it as an expense. It was cash out, and then we created an asset. So it was never expense. The idea is that we have to slowly expense this $25,000 over time. That's the idea of depreciation. As we're using up the truck, and I just made little finger quotes, but you can't see it. As we are using up the truck, we have to expense it. And that is called depreciation. Now you might say, where the heck did you get this $4,000 number from? Did you make it up? Well, yes and no. Let's see how I calculated the $4,000. All right, so we bought the truck for $25,000. I'm assuming that it has a five year useful life. That means we have to depreciate it over the five year period. That means we're gonna use up the truck over five years. I'm also gonna assume that it has a $5,000 salvage value. That means we're not depreciating the entire $25,000. We're gonna depreciate $20,000 over five years. At the end of five years, it's not like the truck has no value. It just has only $5,000 in salvage value. And that equals $4,000 per year of depreciation. It's the $25,000 minus the $5,000 salvage value, which is $20,000, used up equally over five years. And this is leaves us with $4,000 per year of depreciation. This method of calculating depreciation is called straight line depreciation. There are several other ways of calculating depreciation, but straight line is uh, the most common. All right, let's account for the depreciation in our T accounts. Before we account for the truck depreciation, let's refresh our memories about how we accounted for the purchase of the truck. Now, we bought the truck for $25,000 cash. Hopefully you spotted, this is where we accounted for that cash going out, $25,000. That's our right side entry. And our left side entry was here. We, by buying the truck, we increased our equipment asset account. We now have more equipment. We lost assets, cash going out, but we gained assets, a truck coming in. Those were our two entries. We did not expense anything at this time. If you look at our P&L account for expenses, there is never a truck expense. Depreciation is the idea that we will depreciate, we will expense that truck over time. And we decided that we're gonna expense it over five years, $4,000 per year. Let's do that accounting. So here's the equipment. Now you might say to yourself, ah, the equipment, it's now worth $4,000 less, so I'm going to make a right side entry in $4,000 in equipment. You're almost right. And if you did it that way, you have the right idea. But what accountants do is they create a, an account called accumulated depreciation, which we'll put right under our equipment. And so this is going to be our T account for depreciation of our equipment. And we're going to make the right side entry here, right? And so on our balance sheet, we're going to have equipment at $25,000 less $4,000 accumulated depreciation for a total value of the equipment of $21,000. We'll see that when we make the balance sheet. So I have made my right side entry here in accumulated depreciation, effectively reducing the book value of the equipment by $4,000. Where will my left side entry be? Well, I already said that depreciation is our way of expensing the capital investment in our equipment uh, over time. 
And so you're right, it's an expense. I'm going to put the $4,000 here as an expense for this year. And that's how we account for depreciation. Our final transaction, transaction number 19. At the end of the year, you must account for the liability insurance. See number five above. Remember number five, BM took out an insurance policy and prepaid the entire insurance policy for the year, $7,000 cash. When we prepaid for that insurance policy, we naturally accounted for the $7,000 cash that went out, but we said that this liability insurance policy was now an asset. Let's look at how we account for it at the end of the year. Before we account for transaction number 19, let's refresh our memories about how we accounted for the purchase of the insurance policy, the prepaying of the insurance policy at the time. So we paid $7,000 for the insurance policy. When we took it out, we prepaid $7,000, which meant we decreased our cash account by making a right side entry. If you remember, we did not expense it at the time. We said that this was a prepaid expense. We could have called it prepaid insurance but we called it prepaid expenses. And so that was an asset. If we look at our expense account, there is no entry for the insurance. We're gonna make the entry now. So at the end of the year, when you have used up that asset, remember we had a $7,000 asset prepaid insurance. We have now used it up. It's the end of the year. We've used it up, so now we have to expense it. There we go. We have to make a right side entry, however, and now we look at this asset prepaid expenses. We no longer have this asset, so we are going to reduce our prepaid expenses by $7,000 and we are done accounting for this transaction. Our final task is to take the T accounts and turn them into financial statements. Please continue watching, go to part three.